Well, good morning, and welcome to New Life Church this morning. Um, for those of you who are just coming in, um, we spent our time during the first service at 930 um, praying for Pastor Steve and Kelly's grandson, Finn. I think most of you are aware that he was diagnosed with um, liver cancer um, about a month ago. I think it was December 4th. And, of course, we've been praying for him, and Lee has been, Lee and Julie have been his parents, which are Pastor Steve's son and daughter-in-law. They've been keeping us updated um, with what's going on. And yesterday, they actually received a good report on his cancer. His tumor markers had gone from, like, 10,000 to 164, which was just unbelievable. But he was still, he still had fever, uh, which he's had for several weeks, really high fever. And the doc, the oncologist was telling them they had to get this fever under control. But they felt like it was being caused by fluid in his lungs. So this morning, uh, Lee texted um, early this morning that uh, Finn has been fever free for six hours. But they are now running into complications that his heart, uh, he's in moving into heart failure. So Alan led us in the first service in a time of prayer and intercession for Finn. So, and for Lee and Julie, for the whole family. And Steve and Kelly uh, had to leave to go to Charleston. They've called the family uh, into Charleston. So um, we are gonna continue um, at the 1030 service, we're going to continue that time of prayer and intercession and worship, and Alan will be leading us uh, in that. So we're going to continue that um, through this, this next period, the 1030 time. So we're going to open with worship, and uh, I'm going to pray before we start, but the song we're starting with, my first thought was, well, maybe that's not appropriate. It's for what we're doing, but I believe it is because I believe God is calling Finn, who is sleeping and his body is sleeping, God is calling him awake. And that's what we're believing. We're praying in agreement this morning. So we're asking the Lord to open up the windows of his body, of that hospital room, and let the light in. Um, prayer came forth at the first meeting um, that where there is light, there is no darkness. So let's just pray that in agreement as we go into the first song of worship, which is let the light in. Lord, we are coming together in full agreement for you to open up the windows of Finn's little body, open up the windows of that hospital room, and, Lord, let your light shine in. Let your light shine in. Let your spirit and your hand move upon his body, upon his heart, Lord. Call his heart to be awake, to function fully as you created it to function. Lord, drain the fluid by the power of your hand and bring everything in his body back into full alignment with how you created him to live and to breathe and to function. We are standing in agreement with Lee and Julie, with Steve and Kelly, with the entire family, Lord. We are standing in agreement for full and complete healing and recovery. So open up the windows, Lord, and let the light in. In Jesus' name, amen.
So from a, a practical standpoint, um, you know, as Steve and family got called down to Charleston immediately this morning, just now, just left for Charleston for their grandson. Uh, clearly that shifted some things this morning for our service. So uh, I was thinking of Matthew 18, 12. Uh, you can read these scriptures, but when things smack you in the face, sometimes scripture comes a little more alive. Um, but Jesus left the 99 to go after the one. So really that's part of the undergirding, I feel like, of this service today. We're going to shift and we're going after that one. And really, in my heart, is to go after several sicknesses. I'm kind of getting tired of being beat up as the church. It's a, I feel like it's about time that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Uh, we are the head. We are designed to be offensive in nature against the kingdom of darkness, not cowering in a corner. And so, Holy Spirit, we want to give you room to move this morning. So energize our prayers and our actions. If you are visiting with us, uh, we do genuinely, genuinely welcome you this morning uh, as we're shifting. Uh, again, uh, just trying to uh, bear with us as we ebb and flow with the Holy Spirit today. And really, but I think, you know, we're, we have the promise, right, that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We are going to do communion here in just a few minutes. Uh, so if you want to ready your elements at home, we, we welcome you for watching online as well. Uh, we do bless you and pray you would feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. So uh, as we navigate this next little bit of the service, we're going to have a mixture of word and worship. And, and you know, uh, one of my, as I've mentioned in the past, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew language is beautiful and is so descriptive in so many ways. And we lose some of that sometimes with our English words. But we know that the words for worship in the Hebrew Bible, there's lots of words for worship. It's not just worship, 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 worship. It's, there's all kinds of things. Laying flat on the floor, jumping around crazy. I mean, there's the shofar. All those things are tied into the word worship. And one of them is a word that means almost a spontaneous crying out. Like people singing out their prayers, their requests. So as we share some bits of word and we pray I just want to remind you that we use I'm just asking the Lord to weaponize our praise and worship today against the kingdom of darkness that we would speak out for these friends and families that are fighting and is, is obviously is for Finn as well and uh, so that's part of what's going on I do have our normal tithe uh, stuff and online but I'm, I'm really just not even going to go there so um, I just want to share what the Lord's put on my heart to start off with this morning. Um, I was praying about the new year, and, and, and Tanya and I, just like probably you know, lots of situations that the Lord really needs to kick in the door and be the hero of the story. And we're just praying that in, praying for that, and in that, so many situations. And I was thinking about King David, and I was reading about him, and, you know, King David was called a man after God's own heart. And I was like, well, Lord, what does that mean? That's, that's, that's cool and all, but what does that really mean? And uh, to boil it all down and make it quick and not drag it out, I felt like the sentence the Lord gave me this morning in prayer was fierce loyalty in my choosing. I mean, I feel like John... I mean, I feel like uh, Peter in John 6, Lord, where else am I going to go? You have the words of life. There's nothing contrived of man in this season that we want. We want you, Lord. We want your kingdom. And so, Lord, today we are making a choice to be fiercely loyal, fiercely choosing, fiercely making choices about your kingdom today. Emotions shut up. I'm choosing. We are choosing as a church body. And so now I'm going to go ahead, I guess, and just do communion. And uh, so this is the ultimate choice that first happened, right? He chose us first so that we could choose him. 
So if you want to celebrate, join me in communion. We're going to go back into worship. Then we're going to mix in some word and prayer. And so just again, hang on with us this morning. Father, we bend our, we bend our hearts. We, we, I'm a mix of emotions and anger right now. I'm a mix. I've just got all kinds of stuff swirling in my head. But I know that I know that I know that there's no beads of sweat on your forehead worrying about this or wondering about it. You've got this. You're sovereign, and I bow. We bow our will to your will. But, Lord, I thank you in this communion moment that you chose us. You made a choice to go to that cross, to pay what we could not pay, to give us your kingdom. And we pause this morning. We just say, thank you for saving us. Where else would we go, Lord? You have the words of life. You have the whole kingdom. You have eternity in mind. And we want what you've got. Thank you. So, Father, we simply take the body of Jesus Christ broken for us. We break it as a reminder of you are broken for us and we receive it into our bodies and for our friends and family and we receive it in faith. Amen. In the same way, Lord, we take the blood of the new covenant and we pour it into our bodies as an act of faith. Pour into us, Holy Spirit, afresh in Jesus' name. Amen. So I do invite you today during worship, if uh, you feel led to pray, the prayer benches, the flag, the shofar, the whatever, it's in the book. We want it. So, uh, amen. Thank you, Brian. Ryan, if you would, just stay up here. Uh, two other elders, I think, Blake and <clears throat> Robert. If y'all would. Robert, if you need to break out the flag, it's okay. We, we allow. Yeah, put Robert on the end there. <clears throat> he absolutely happens to get a breakout. And the children are released. Uh, it's a little... Uh, be a little disservice. Hopefully it'll be a little different today. We're trying to go by the transcript of the Holy Ghost. You know, that requires a little more of all of us to press in. If it's not a good service today, you can blame yourself because today is a service of the Holy Ghost and His people. And we began this morning with prayer for Finn. That is Pastor Steve's grandson. And uh, then right before the service uh, began, the first service, we got a phone call from Lee, and it was some, not some, it was some bad news, so to speak, and uh, so the pastor had to leave. We went into prayer as a house of prayer then, and we just feel it appropriate that we stay in as a house of prayer uh, for this next part of, of the service. Uh, that we, you know, the, the word that the Lord kept giving me was, uh, is transformer, of course. I, the Lord's given me that word before, but it was a little different this time. And which the transformers, we know if the children were still in here, they'd be all excited. And I'm 69 now, and I still get kind of excited over transformers. But uh, to be, I felt like the Lord wanted this morning to be a total act of transformation, being transformers. And you know, transformer has uh, been a children's movies, I guess you could say, of these uh, machines, and they were transformed into another mach machine. And um, But the body of Christ, we're transformers. We're to transform. We're to be transformed into the image of Christ. And this morning, I felt like the Lord was saying, Trans we're to be transformers. And But my mind went to a transformer on a power pole. And if we have a transformer, it builds up current then all of a sudden it will re we'll release a higher grade current. And I felt like as collectively as a, as a body of Christ, as a church this morning, that the Lord was calling us to be a spiritual transformer that could collectively bring the power of God together and just release it in a burst into the heavens to change what we're seeing happening. Uh, this prayer time uh, is uh, 
for Finn. That's our, one of our main focus. But also, uh, since then, I've gotten uh, more text, more phone calls just in the last 30 minutes. It's like, oh my God. Um, uh, Tony Barr, uh, Jason Barr's father, they just took him uh, to the hospital. Uh, Tony Parker, everybody know Tony Parker. He's deathly sick uh, with COVID and now turned into pneumonia. And and I can go on. I can, listen. I can go on and on. I'm not trying to set up a depressing situation, but I am here to report to you of a reality that I'm not liking. And uh, it, there's no doubt been an onslaught of of against mankind. Definitely the body of Christ. And I think God's calling us this morning to be transformers. We're to transform, uh, be an agent of change in the earth. That's what we are this morning. The way we'll express that is through prayer. We'll have a microphone that uh, Blake will have. And if you have a prayer, a word or a prayer, we're not asking for a preaching, okay? There we go. If you need to preach, I'm capable. Uh, but we are asking for a true word of the Spirit and prayer. Because we're looking that collectively uh, we can change things. And the elders are here also. They'll contribute some things. Uh, Robert Wright, if you would share with us uh, about the prayer benches. Uh, uh, just come share with us what, what the Lord gave you there. What I wanted to do is just give a little um, reading here, it really, um, on some of the history of kneeling prayer so we understand a little bit about why, maybe a reason you've never thought of before why you would kneel and pray. Maybe you have thought of it before, but just real quickly, I wanted to read it to you. Kneeling in prayer is an ancient practice with considerable purpose, a posture that comes with its own rich historical and biblical background. So much so, it would be a travesty for the true purposes of kneeling to get lost behind tradition. Or worse yet, if the practice were dismissed and abandoned by the Christian altogether. Thankfully, by meditating upon the intended purposes of kneeling before the Lord within the context of origin, an essential aspect of Christianity appears. And it is here we'll find a form of meaningful prayer and worship that can and arguably should, whenever possible, be entered into with pleasure and with honor. Historically, kneeling to bow at the feet of another was common practice in the ancient world, a universal sign of submission, honor, and respect. For this reason, it was once expected that people would kneel in the presence of kings, even taking a knee before anyone of higher authority to whom they sought a word or favor, simply because it was culturally normal to do so. Beyond this portrayal of humble reverence, however, is the connection between kneeling and worship. This could possibly be related to the fact that kings were often regarded as deities, but it's also a concept seen in the Hebrew word for worship itself. The word literally means to bow down. Something that that's the word worship, literally means to bow down. Something that would have been done from the kneeling position. Biblically, God chose a man named Abram from this culture to be different. His family purposefully set apart from the, in, from the ingrained worship of people and man-made idols around them. Here they found themselves being made holy by God and for God. Of course, old habits die hard, as this showed to be one of the greatest struggles portrayed within the Old Testament. It was only with the great patience, love, and care that God repeatedly revealed He alone was worthy of such worship, honor, and praise. Somewhere throughout this process, the practice of kneeling to worship, people and things became a second, excuse me, became a sacred kneeling to God. So I'm going to say that again. Somewhere throughout this process, the practice of kneeling to worship people and things became a sacred kneeling to God, the creator of all people and things. 
For God's people, kneeling was now one way to worship him while entering into prayerful dialogue from that same place of submission, honor, and respect. So hopefully that gives a little insight, but we, we have these beautiful prayer benches that were recently made by hand. And so maybe for a day like today is why they're sitting here. Maybe for a heart like yours is why they're sitting here today. So don't let them remain empty if your heart has something to bow down and worship God for. Amen. Amen. This church, we do want to have a reputation of being a praying church. Amen. We, uh, you know, church is the time that we come to hear the word of God and we come together. But church is also to be a place that God's people come together and we all participate. Jesus said, let it be called a house of prayer. I, I don't guess that needs too much of a definition, does it? It's to be called a house of prayer. So today, as we go into prayer, we'll have worship. We'll lead us in a worship song, and then we'll uh, have prayer. But as we're worshiping, or to some that want to pray out loud, just raise your hand. Blake will come bring the mic. You can, we want to pray out loud what the Holy Spirit is saying. But also during worship or anything, if you want to come up and pray, just come on and pray. Because this is about prayer. This is not about what somebody's saying. This is about what you're saying to God. See, most of why we come to church is for us. Right? But worship's the reason God shows up because it's for him. Amen. So today's God's church. Today's God's time. We're here to worship him, to pray and to worship. Do we have some petitions? Yes. But prayer is worship. Worship is worship. So today's God's church day. Amen. Amen. So if you get a prayer, in silence, just come up. If you have a word, raise your hand. The elders will get a word from now to now. And until then, Karen, lead us in a little bit of worship, if you will. As we start this next song, we're reminded that God inhabits the praises of his people. So let's praise the Lord together.
church let's be behind these prayers we're transforming with you sister go for it Lord Jesus we know that your last words on the cross was it's finished it is finished and from your perspective we just want to agree with that we the church just want to say yes and amen it is finished for every need that has been brought before your throne this morning Lord Jesus you said it's finished and we say yes and amen to a conclusion that will only bring you glory only bring you glory you said that you will not be robbed of glory and that you would not be mocked so Father We add our yes. We add our amen. We agree. We agree. It is a finished work. And we glorify you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you. We thank you for that finished work that you allow us to be partakers in through your precious blood. Yes and amen. In Jesus' name. everyone in the house said amen Amen. Amen. who else who's next just raise your hand if you're ready to pray let's worship our God in prayer here we go Uh, we received this message uh, it's from Gary Stoppard 
but he wants to, he received a message during the time that we were praying earlier. And he said that there are two people now dealing with heart issues, Ray Abbott and Finn. And it's our oldest generation and our youngest. And he got a scripture. It was in Psalms 102, verse 19 and 20. And it says, to tell the generations the Lord looked down from his sanctuary. He looked to the earth from heaven to hear the groans of the prisoners, to release those condemned to die. So we stand on that word that both Ray and Finn be released from any negative reports being spoken over them and that the generations all come together with one heart and decree the word of the Lord that Ray and Finn's hearts will come into alignment with the blood of Jesus and it will override anything causing heart failure and cause heart rhythm to become normal and all the fluids in their lungs to disappear in Jesus' name. And in Psalms 102, 21 and 22, it says that the Lord's fame will be celebrated in Zion when the multitudes of generations come together to worship the Lord. Amen and amen. And if the Lord feels free to share this and bless us and to heal them, Lord, we receive it, we agree with it, and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Well said. Amen and amen. Who, who else? We had somebody else. There's somebody grabbing you right there. Let's take authority over this. If we can't do that, we're kind of useless. This is our pastor, our friend, the dude we go to. What happens now? Let's take authority over this whole thing. Give that little boy a chance. Amen and amen. Right up front, Blake, there you go. And then here. My prayer is this decree from Isaiah 41. The last sentence in verse 9 through 13. You are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all who rage against you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who contend with you will be reduced to nothing and will perish. You will seek them, but will not find them. Those who war against you shall be as nothing. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and tells you, do not fear, I will help you. And we decree this over every situation that anyone in this house and is the part of this family of God, yes. that nothing, nothing shall overcome you. But the Holy Spirit is hovering over you right now to turn your situation around and strip the enemy from his purpose to destroy the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And the house of prayer said, amen. I feel led and have um, since the service started to pray for the leadership. Um, I feel that God is calling the elders to steer this ship in boldness, in obedience to what he's called us to, that we are a healing place not to be afraid but to step out now because the time is now for this ship to move forward but you must lead us you must encourage us you must give us opportunities to speak out and not be afraid give us this brothers give us the leadership that we need so we can move into the kingdom and be the place of healing that God has called and blessed this place to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer said, 
Amen and amen. Um, there you go. So, yeah, right back there. Thank you. I was struck by the timing of this. One of the most successful military campaigns is described in the book of Joshua, chapter 9 and 10, and things were going very well as they are here. But there was a deception that slipped in and unfortunately made the whole thing void. A deception that came from, of all things, compassion, and it made the whole thing void. I'm not going to go into the background, Joshua chapter 9 and 10. But there's a time when our decreeing is met by God's acting. Two verses. This is in Psalm 119. I'm going to read 125 and 126. <clears throat> I'm your servant. Give me understanding that I might know your testimonies. It is time. It is time for you to act, O oh Lord. And there's a time when we decree and there is a time for you to act, O oh Lord. Not that he needs to be reminded. We need to recognize the difference in the time. We need to recognize when it's the Lord that's going to act. It is time for you to act, O oh Lord. Why is this a time? Continue on. For they have regarded your law as void. Just as they did in the book of Joshua, something has slipped in or people have slipped in and want to say this healing thing is void this healing thing is void time for you to act oh lord jesus be with these brothers and sisters we recognize the thing that would attempt to make this whole body void in its healing mission is a signal that it is time for you to act, O oh Lord, act on behalf of all our brothers and sisters struggling right now. It is time for you to act. In the house of her said, Amen. I was hearing, uh, I'm just going to be obedient here. Uh, is Russell back there? I keep, there he is. The reason I was hesitant. I kept hearing the Spirit saying, it's a rustling mighty wind. I was like, rustling mighty wind? And uh, then they kept saying it over and over, and then he said, Russell, Russell. I thought, oh, okay, Russell. Russell, would you pray for us? That's all I know. I believe the Lord wants you to pray for us. I'd be glad to, but the whole time, all I've had in my heart is this mercy. Father, I just cry out for your mercy for all these situations because you have told us in your word that your mercy is new, fresh, vibrant every morning. Every morning, just like the sun rises in the east, it's new. So, Lord, I just thank you for your mercy in these situations that we're praying for. And, Lord, that's all I've had in my heart the whole time is to cry out for your mercy. And you are a merciful God. So I thank you for your mercy in this time. Amen. And the house of prayer said, Amen. Karen, if you would lead us one more time.
God, it's a prophetic prayer. All right, thank you. to these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the Lord this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones I will make breath enter you and you will come to life but he asked him to prophesy we're supposed to prophesy we're supposed to rise up and take what back was Satan stolen from us and our families and our loved ones but I think it's praising him I think the praises of his people gathered together will do this and this is what he gave me this morning Oh, wait a minute. Y'all bear with me. I'm sorry. I just am so nervous. It's, um, this verse came to me. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have done. You will, if you believe, you will do the works. Not maybe mine. He says, you will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do in, uh, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Do we really believe that? Do we really believe we will do greater things? Do we really believe? If I could, if I could to get let you see this clip. If I could let you see this clip right here. It's from a bug's life, and God keeps bringing this up. If you could hear this, I, 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 this keeps coming up to my mind. This is a bug's life. It's a kid's, it's a kid's movie, but this keeps coming up. And I say, Jesus, help my unbelief. I don't want to be like that. Okay, let's see. Yeah, but we can forget about him. Yeah, it was just one hand. <laughs> one hand. <laughs> Just one ant. Yeah, boys, they're puny. Puny? Say, let's pretend this grain is it's a puny a lot, little rock. ant. Did that hurt? <laughs> well, how about this one? Let it go, the whole pile of rock. How about this? Going back. Does anybody else want to 
All right, this is what I think what this works. I wanted to do a praise thing at this church, and I've already talked to Pastor Steve about it. That get together with God's people and bring all of our breakthroughs that we need and all of our children and all of our grandchildren, all of our families that we've been praying for forever. And I think we need to stand up and say enough is enough and gather together churches all over this universe and say we win. We have a whole army of angels fighting for us. Why aren't we standing up to it? Why aren't we fighting back and saying that's it? Why are we gathering together and really believing a God? I've seen miracles in my life. I am a witness. I am a miracle. I have literally not had breath in, breath to be in and out so many times. And I would cry out to God and i say, God, just please heal me. And it would go away instantly. One time... I had bronchial asthma, but I didn't know it. My husband wouldn't run the unit. He wanted to run the wood burning stove because of the cost. And one night, I remember, I, said, I didn't have insurance because it took me off of my medical insurance and left me, and I was a housewife. He didn't leave me. I mean, he just took all that away. And I laid in bed, and I could not breathe. It felt like my breath was coming up to here, and I couldn't get the air in or out very good. And I said, I don't want to be stupid, Lord. If you want me to go to the emergency room, I'll go to the emergency room room but I don't want the cost I just don't want the cost and I said put me to sleep and wake me up in the morning and he did and he did and I can tell you story my journals are filled with this and you would think that my faith would be way stronger but when you don't have nobody else for God you got everything everything why don't we believe it oh God forgive me if I don't believe I want us to burn again Amen. Well, I've never seen an ant release so much at one time. That was a release of this ant I've ever seen. Now, there was more release than you understood, I promise you. You say, well, Alan, I don't know what was she saying here. I say, it doesn't make any difference. There was something released. Surely you could hear it in her voice. It's not so much a word that's said as it is the spirit. It's the passion that's released. Amen. something. I just want to agree with our sister there. I appreciate her passion. Sometimes I get crusty and I appreciate your passion. Passion of the Christ because that was the scripture that came to me and she just exuded this. Um, I've said this before but well two things uh, in my heart. This, You know the Lord gives us each other as the body of Christ because he knows at times some of us are going to be in a pit and we need somebody to throw some ropes in and help us, and lift us up, and encourage us, and speak life into us, and and uh, so that's what one of this, that's what this is beginning to look like. I mean, to this today, it just reminds me of the church being the church. Uh, it's, it's carrying each other in times of, of trouble, but I still keep seeing this, and I've said this before. I've had these uh, debit card, these uh, prepaid gift card things on my desk for a while, and I haven't used them. And yet they're loaded with the whatever money on the card, but I still haven't swiped the cards to use them. And that's what I kept hearing in my spirit again this morning is the Lord's teaching us how to, to do this scripture because if we don't actually exercise our faith, it's like a gift card just sitting on the desk. We won't use it. And so verily I say unto you, and he's speaking to the church here, whatever ye shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven so Lord I feel like the Lord's teaching us how to swipe the card today as a church how to loose and bind. I don't really understand all that scripture, what that scripture means about loosing and binding, but I just know that that tells me he's activated the church. He's loaded the gift card. He's loaded the power. He's loaded the anointing. He's given his entire Holy Spirit to us 
as an absolutely loaded situation and we have to learn to exercise it how to worship it out speak it out pray it out prophetically act it out I mean if you read the Old and the New Testament the Lord did not hold his saints did not hold back when they needed to get the Lord's attention they did some pretty wild things but I'm just uh, encouraging you don't don't grow weary right now now's the time to again I have to tell my emotions and I have to tell my my intellect shut up sit down be quiet let the little lawyer shut up inside my head all that stuff shut down and let my spirit come alive again let my spirit double down this morning that no 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 we're going to bind and we're going to loose we're going to loose healing and these people and Finn and Ray and Tony and Terry all these folks and the ones you know of too Tony and I know of several others and we're going to bind cancer we're going to bind Omnicron or whatever other Greek name they want to throw at these things we're going to bind it because we're the church and he died for the church he died to give it authority and we want to exercise that authority. We don't want to get, I don't want to get to heaven and say, Brian, I gave you so much potential and you never exercised it. You never brought the kingdom to bear. You never brought it on earth as it is in heaven. Why didn't you use all that I gave you? I was busy, Lord, or I just didn't get it, or it was embarrassing, or I wasn't sure it would work. I, I don't want any of those excuses now. And so, Lord, we just ask you, I just pray by your spirit right now to release my brothers and sisters. If, if there's any fatigue right now, any weariness, Lord, let them double down in their spirits to continue to cry out to you, Papa, to loose the blessings of heaven today. On fin, Finnegan Watson, and, and again, Ray Abbott, Tony, Terry, and those are just the ones I know. I know there's others, and I don't mean to leave anyone out. You can call out their names in worship. But Lord, let the church be powerful today to execute your authority on the earth in agreement with your Holy Spirit. I was thinking about his names. You know, I, was, I, I got that flag, Jehovah Nisi, the banner over us. Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. The Most High God. Jehovah Hagadoyle, the Most High God. All his names he gives us to call on when times are needed. And so, Lord Jesus, we just call on your names as your children, as your, as your church, as your activated and powerful church this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Does anyone else have a prayer before we close? Here we go. This is not a prayer, but it's a confirmation, I guess. Only a few of you would know who Greg Patton, he attended this church in the old church. Man of God, if there is one, he hears from the Holy Ghost. If you know him, he'll wake you up at six in the morning. Hey, God spoke this to me four o'clock this morning, told me to tell you this and be dead on. I talked to him two or three days ago. He's a pastor of a small church in Louisiana now. And he said, Franklin, he was praying about COVID and things and he said, you know what God's dealing me with? I heard him speak. He keeps saying over and over, where's the church? Hope it affects you like it did me. I'll be the first to repent. But that's what Greg said. He said, man, God is, he keeps saying, where's the church at? I gave you authority. I'll let you expound in your own way. I gave you authority over this COVID, over the darkness. But that's what the Holy Ghost has been telling me. Where's my church in this hour? And Perry Stone has a uh, sermon years ago. Heaven's waiting on earth. We said, God, do something. Well, he said, I gave you the authority. Are we using it? I haven't been. But uh, on the heels of what Brian said and her sister, that's what God's asking this great man of God. Where's the church? Where's my church? We're just kind of on charismatic, sitting back. But... Okay. Well, there's prayer right there, I think. We'll take a couple more prayers. So. Well, this isn't really a prayer, but last year, around between Thanksgiving and Christmas, my brother Clay, I'm sure some of you know him, um, they called the family in. Um, he was in the hospital at Fry and then went to Winston, 
and he was going to have to have open heart surgery. He had a valve that had clogged up. It was bad and it was sending bad gunk into his body. And the night before he went in for his surgery, the nurse saw him and my brother was standing outside his room and the nurse says, Scott, who was that guy that was in your brother's room at the head of his bed touching him? And my brother said, there's not been anybody in there. I've been standing right out the door. And the nurse said, no, Scott, he was here. It was an angel that touched my brother. The next day when they took him to surgery, they decided to do one more, whatever they do, x-ray or whatever. His heart had been healed. He had been touched by an angel and miraculously healed. And when my brother woke up, the doctors, the nurses, everyone was dancing around saying, Christmas miracle, Christmas miracle. So miracles do happen, and hearts are healed. There is a, uh, a victory that uh, was prophesied this morning at the end of our service that we would all stand together and declare a victory over all of these prayers and then by us standing in agreement we'll be making this declaration and if you will stand and I'm going to pray for us and we want to pray victory over all these circumstances these situations and uh so, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, O oh God, for this day. This day, Lord, has been somewhat unusual. We don't claim to know what we're doing, but we do claim to try to follow you in your spirit. So, Lord God, is our prayer that as a group, as a congregation, as the body of Christ, as a house of prayer, we declare victory together. Say it with me. We can let declare victory in the name of Jesus over all of these circumstances of sickness, disease. Lord God, as a church off of the side of the road, we declare that there is victory in Jesus Christ. There lies our hope. There lies our healer in Jesus' name. Trusting in what's sinking, these boats weren't built for me. I'm done drifting on the walls of insecurity. In the noise and the distractions, in the storms of arguing, I hear your voice call.
bless this congregation, oh God, and I ask you to bless them in mental and physical and in spiritual health. I pray, oh God, that they'll have blessings in mental and physical and spiritual health. I pray, oh God, that they'll be able to pray over others for mental, physical, and spiritual health. So I release this group, oh God, to go in the power of the Spirit of the kingdom of God, that we might leave from here a little closer to you, a little more empowered. Dear God, please let those that we've prayed for today not leave our hearts today, that throughout today and the week, let us intercede for each other is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You're released to leave.